Hi, uh, the marking gauge is a very simple tool. It's used quite a lot in hand woodwork. Uh, I've mentioned it a few times in, um, in some of my jointing uh, videos. Um, and also it's used for marking out when you're dimensioning uh, pieces by hand. Um, I thought it, it can be quite a tricky tool for uh, people new to woodwork to get the hang of. I tend to end up with um, sort of uh, tram lines uh, wobbling around all over the place and a choice of lines which is always fatal. Um, what you're looking for is a nice clean crisp line. So what I thought I'd do is uh, give you a few tips on, on how to control uh, your marking gauge. Um, first thing is to just talk about uh, different types of marking gauge. Um, this is a sort of a basic uh, one. Um, this is the one I, this is my marking gauge actually. Uh, so basically it consists of a sliding stock and a pin um, at the end there uh, which is used to make the mark. So you can get uh, mortise gauges which instead of just having the one pin has the two pins and a lot of the um, tips I'm going to be talking about will apply to morti uh, a mortise gauge as, as well as a marking gauge uh, but we're, we're going to be looking specifically at the marking gauge. Uh, another one is a uh, cutting gauge. So instead of having the pin that I mentioned earlier, we've got a little cutting edge there, a little blade. Sort of, that's the rest of it here. Sort of, uh, it's probably part of the axle blade that's been sharpened up or something. Um, <clears throat> and that's used when you're wanting, generally, this gauge would be used for marking along the grain. If you're wanting to well, mark across the grain, you'd use this because that knife gives you a sort of a better cutting action across the grain, gives you a lot crisper uh, line. Uh, whereas a sort of uh, a standard um, marking gauge would give you a more of a scratchy line. Although I will be talking about sort of preparing the uh, the uh, the point to uh, avoid that uh, later on. And the last one I want to mention is um, new kid on the block. Well, not so new nowadays. Uh, which is a, a wheel gauge. I've not really got into them. It's probably now I'm a bit of a um, traditionalist of sticking them up. So uh, I haven't really sort of taken to them really. I still use the old sort. Um, basically it's a, it's a little blade there, a sharp blade there, a wheel, circular blade. And then you've got a, a stock and more often than not they'll have some sort of micro adjustment on. So you, you can lock that there and then use this handle here to do micro adjustment. Um, yeah, they work quite well. I um, don't know why I haven't taken to them really. Uh, the Veritas ones uh, particularly are quite good. The ones from sort of Axminster and places like that, there's a bit of play in them and it's not quite so, so accurate. Uh, but the Veritas ones are okay. Anyway, we're going to stick with, with the old tradition now. Uh, first thing, let's have a look at uh, how you set up your marking gauge. I've got this piece of stock here. It's about 60 mil wide. I, let's say I want to reduce it down to 55 mil. So we want to set up the marking gauge to 55 mil. So the way to do it is obviously you slacken off this thumb screw here so that the stock can slide up and down. And then we want to position the point of the pin. So we've got the end of the ruler against the stock and the point of the pin on 55 mil. It's quite important that you do actually have it on the point of the pin. Let's see if you can see that better. Um, don't sort of measure down to the bottom of the pin because that's not accurate enough. You really want to be spot on to that point. There we are. Tighten up. And it's worth checking that you haven't moved it while you were tightening up. One other thing is that um, if, it, if it has moved very slightly, it's very difficult to do fine adjustments and the easiest way of doing it is to just tack top or bottom of the shaft just to um, get the thing into place. So you can see I've actually unset it now. I'm very slightly under 55 so I'm just going to tap it under, on the end there and we're pretty much on 55 now. So now we're now ready to actually uh, start making marks. Um, <clears throat> Most people, when they first come to woodwork and they pick up a, a marking gauge, they hold it like that by the shaft. That's the most convenient place to hold it, really, isn't it? Obviously. But I find you get a lot more control if you hold it between finger and thumb. 
like that, index finger and thumb. Excuse my plaster on my thumb, I looked larger than we saw a couple of weeks ago and it's still recovering. Um, so you get a lot more control if you hold it that way than if you hold it there. You're further away from the wood over holding it there. And you can also sort of rotate it like that, which will become important later on. So, what you're going to do is going to offer the, offer the um, marking gauge up to the, uh, the wood working from the face edge, I must mention face edge in all my videos um, and so get the stock against the face edge and then put the corner of the shaft onto the surface and then rotate the um, we'll be up here really, shouldn't we? then rotate the the uh, gauge, you know, but we hold it by the stock, you can rotate it more easily until the pin is just engaged with the uh, surface of the work and then you're ready to go. So the actual pressure you're applying is a rotational pressure that way and also pressure of the stock against the face edge. So in that way you can then, I'm going to move over here now, in that way so I've got the stock against the edge and I'm rotating the pin down into the work. So the actual corner of the shaft isn't actually that higher off the, off the surface. And you're working your way down like that. And I've got the wood propped against a, a, a bench dock there to give it stability. And I'm going to lift it up a little bit just to do that very end bit. You'll notice also that I'm working away from myself. You can do it that way, but I find the problem is you can't actually see where the pin's going um, because it's hidden by the shaft. Whereas here, you can see what's going on all the time, which can be important because sometimes you're actually working you're wanting to go to a, a stop in a particular position. Whereas if you're working that way, you can't actually see where you, where, where you are. Now some people may find it a little bit tricky just wedging it against the bench dog like that, but you can do if you want. Just put it in the vise like that, and then you can take two hands, you've got two hands to uh, devote to the marking gauge. And what you can do is, it's quite useful, is you can grip it with your index finger and thumb there, and then just use your other fingers to pull against the edge here and that gives you a lot more stability, you're less likely to wander. Um, and what we're looking for is a nice clean line like that. I've got a picture of a, um, a piece with a one side's got which side is it? Well, yeah, one side's got a sort of bit of a wobbly line which you get if you if you're not careful. The other side's got a, a nice clean line. The one on the left is a wobbly line. The one on the right is a nice clean line. Um, one of the most important points is to to achieve that, to, to avoid that wandering that you get, which then gives you a choice of wobbly lines to work to, is instead of looking at the pin when you're working, you know, you're looking at the pin there but to make sure it doesn't wobble around, it's a lot better to devote your attention to the, the where the, the, the stock meets the uh, edge there. If you keep your attention on there to make sure that no gap is appearing between the stock and the edge of the work, then the pin will look after itself because as long as there's no gap down here, the pin will be following a straight course. So instead of watching the pin, watch down in the, in the corner there, down where the, where the stock meets the edge. And that should give you a nice clean straight line. And once you've done one side, you then turn it over and do the other side if necessary. Um, that's it really. Um, just sort of reiterate the two most important things to get a good, um, good, li good line. One is to have that trailing action, so your rotation of the rotational pressure and just bring it until you've until the pin is engaged, so there is actually the, it, there is a, a trading uh, effect. You know the pin is angled, and the other thing is to make sure you keep looking at the stock against the edge rather than the, the pin. Uh, I did want to uh, introduce a couple of little tips as well. I'm going to turn the piece of wood round actually, so that uh, I need to put put a mark across as well. 
Say for instance we wanted to make a mark up to a, a line. So we've got a cross line here and I want to stop my marking gauge there. What, what, what tends to happen is you, you mark up to mark onto the line and before you know it you've overshot. But one little trick is to put a little dimple at that point where you want to stop and then you mark down there and the and the pin drops into the dimple and stops because it's sort of met, a, met an obstacle in the, in the dimple uh, and you avoid overshooting. The other little tip, which is pretty simple, you probably common sense really, if you wanted to mark the centre of a, a piece, the easiest way of doing it, rather than sort of measuring and doing a bit of arithmetic, is literally take a stab at it. So I'm sort of taking a guess there that's pretty central and I'll make a mark on one side and then turn it around and if the marks line up I'm pretty damn close there um, not sure if I, just to demonstrate I'm, I'm going to make it less close so if I mark there and then turn around and come in from the other side you can see hopefully you can see rather hopefully you can see there's two marks there now, and if I just... No, I've got to go the other way. Give it a tap. And then make marks from either side again. There we are, we can see now those marks are lining up. Um, so that's really it for using the marking gauge. Um, I do want to sort of talk a little bit about the profile of the pin. Um, <clears throat> so, because uh, the pins, when they come from the, uh, the manufacturer, are just a sort of single point, and it can be an advantage to actually introducing a sort of a more of a thumbnail type shape to it. Um, so, I'll just get myself set up to, to show you how to, how to achieve that. So, I'm going to draw a little diagram on this board here of uh, piece of wood that we've been marking, looking at it from the end. There we go. And those little V lines, marks on either side that are our gauge line. So we're looking at the end of the piece, so we're looking at the end grain like that. Um, well, if we were to dimension it, you know, we gauge this piece to dimension it, we'd then plane down to the, the gauge line like that repeatedly until we hit the bottom of the V of the gauge line, like that. The only problem is that we've got these little angled pieces here, you know, from the rest of the, the shape of the pin that we use to actually might make the mark. And they will possibly affect uh, aesthetically, you know, the, 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 the piece that we're making. So it'd be useful to try and uh, avoid that. So what we can do is we can shape the pin so I'll draw the pin very much magnified and sorry, wrong side, so that's the pin shape like that. So it's got a flat edge to it. Um, so that will and will end up with a, a marking gauge line like that rather than V shaped. Well, it's V shaped, but it's a flat edge to it, if you know what I mean. And we'll also introduce a sort of a bit of a thumbnail shape onto, onto, the, uh, onto the pin. Uh, I've got the, um, the shaft of the uh, marking gauge in, in the vise, and I'm using a, you could use a riffle file, any fine file. I've, I've got a fine um, saw file here. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in a bit so you can see a little bit more closely what I'm doing. It is tricky this because, uh, as I said, uh, my um, camera isn't brilliant. Whoops. Come back. There we go. That's about as best we can get, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off just filing that flat on the, on the edge there. About two mil. So I'm just going to work my way across there until that flat meets the point at the top there. So if 
probably actually need to be a little bit more than two mil because we're actually going to be losing a bit of height when we form the, uh, uh, the, the thumbnail shape. So I've got a nice flat there. Now what I'm going to do is just round that, that point there. That's it, I think. Uh, so what I'm looking for is a little bit of sort of rounding at the top there and a sort of a curving round that way and then a flat on that side as we, as we discussed. Um, and what I do is um, I've got a little diamond slipstone. I can just sort of, uh, quite a fine diamond slipstone, I can just polish up those faces that I've created there. Um, so if you've got a fine, small fine stone, then you can, can sort of tidy it up with, up with that. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, my little diamond slipstone, which after a minute I couldn't find earlier. Uh, so <coughs> all over my workshop for it. Um, so basically, what we can do is just—it's really just to sort of polish up the, the surfaces because there might be a little bit of rough left on the on the file, so I'm just sort of giving them a little tickle up just to polish them a bit. It's probably not absolutely necessary, if you haven't got one I wouldn't worry, um, but it does give a slightly cleaner cut I think, uh, you know, when you're actually using it. So I'm just sort of polishing up the edges there a bit. That should be ready to go now. One thing you may find if you profile the pin in the way I've just shown you is that your gauge line let's get this set, is that your gauge line um, might be a little bit finer than normal uh, makes it more, more difficult to see especially in sort of stripy wood this, this um, poplar is fairly easy to spot your lines but if, if you know and things like that it's a bit more striped it's more difficult to see so what you can do is just to highlight the line with pencil I show you down here. It'd be a nice sharp pencil, probably an H pencil or something like that, and you're just laying it on the line and very lightly running it down. Um, <clears throat> if you use a stubby old HB pencil or something like that and jab it into the line and scour it down, then you'll end up sort of introducing an accuracy. You want to just, it's just introducing a little bit of graphite just to highlight it. <clears throat> So that's probably about it on, uh, on marking gauges. Um, if you found it interesting and you want to see a bit more of my uh, channel, you can, might fancy subscribing, uh, we'll see. Um, and if you have been, thanks for watching.